Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael. Grandkids call me Rue. Thanks for being on Rue Doodles Live. It's 857, almost 858 now because I've been putzing around here uh, <clears throat> searching for all the things I've lost for the last few weeks. What have I done with this desk top? Uh, the old wooden barley twist uh, table is uh, taking some abuse this week as I pile things on it and uh, I've got uh, some projects going. Anyway, I've also just been in slow down mode, change the pace, and that's what I had to do. Uh, so glad you're joining me this morning. I'm going to say hello to you in just a second here. Mm. I'm going to pour through some good hot black tea this morning, and uh, I appreciate you being on. I have missed this community. I really have. And uh, it's it's fun to uh, let my brain just um, rewind a little bit and then also reach out there and think, if I were sitting in your place, uh, maybe having your, uh, uh, if you're having toast, you're probably eating alone. If you're having biscuits, you have company biscuits in the South Saint community. I've been working on some things for that again. And, um, uh, uh, working on a biscuit painting right now, so to speak with a B. And, um, uh, but what it reminds me of is that if I sit out there, I think, what would I want to hear someone say about watercolor? And so in my process of, of taking it a little easier, been to the doctor that uh, I've got a full physical coming up again, but found that I had bronchial uh, mess. Uh, and that's, that's post COVID. Lots of people do. <coughs> You'll still hear a little bit of a cough. I'm not going to close every button down. I'll close. There we go. A little, uh, a little cough that's still going around and it doesn't rattle and uh, I'm sleeping and some, as much as I sleep anyway, you know, my brain fires yesterday it was four 30 and I started thinking about things I needed to get up. And that's a good sign that I'm getting healthy again. And I've got a project going with my granddaughter, which is so fun today. And then, uh, it's a split day. Then we're off to, uh, attend a dear, 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 dear friends, uh, old friend. We first met in the seventies, mid seventies. Uh, we're gonna, um, he had a little bout with cancer and solved it for many, many years. God did. And then, uh, he, uh, went on home. And uh, be with Jesus this past uh, week or two, and we're going to go to his service today and then back to the project here uh, with my granddaughter. And, uh, you know, life is short. And so uh, that prompted by just feeling poorly the last few days, we took a trip to the mountains and I just drove up to Asheville, Carol, and I said, let's just go. I'm going to go breathe some mountain air. And uh, it was pleasure. Um, and at the same time, we went through one of our old stops that we hadn't been to in 10 or 12 years. And it's the uh, uh, Folk Art Center, 
on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And uh, when I say folk art, I'm talking folk art. I mean, people from the early mountains. We've had friends who had quilts in there. I used to go to blacksmith demonstrations there and uh, just uh, storytelling there. I mean, it's, it's just this wonderful building that the state put together for uh, uh, the city and the Blue Ridge Parkway. And so there's some amazing things there. Lots of potters, lots of woodworkers. And so it's, it's just fun to be a part of that. And, uh, uh, but it was hot in there and I was still feeling a little bit like I just need to go out and breathe that fresh air again. So Carol, I said, Carol, I'm not rushing you ever. Cause why? Right. I carry my little pad with me. I got my pens with me. I've got my paint with me. I've got a water brush. I've got everything I need. So I go outside and I take a little small piece of paper like this. Uh, here you can't even see my desk. I'm showing you all that stuff and you can't see it. It's because I'm out of practice doing what I do. I have my little notebook here. You know, inside this little leather notebook from Buffalo Jackson, I carry um, Kilimanjaro paper and I cut this off of the 9x12 block. So this is 140 pound, 100% cotton, always cold pressed for me. Okay. Every now and then I'll do a hot press, but I'll always mention that. If I don't mention if it's cold or hot, it is always cold unless I say hot. So that's going to be the rule of thumb that I do here. I just love the way my style and my amount of water works on cold cotton paper. So uh, I know some of you take notes on this show. Some of you don't. Some of you watch. Some of you paint. Whatever you do that makes you feel creative and pushes you. And that's where I'm going with this little story. So here's my story and I'm sticking to it. I go outside, I open up my little pad, and I, uh, I say to, uh, to myself, just uh, doodle a rooster and lay it over to the side and doodle a bee and uh, paint what you can. And when Carol comes, we'll go get, grab a late by lunch and head on across the mountain. And I'm just having a time, and, and uh, I'm, I'm down and I'm working with my little brush. I'm, I'm painting like this. You know, you're kind of in there. And sometimes I don't even have a place to set it down. I just lock it in like this. And I'm just sitting there, and I just love the freedom and the looseness of just both hands being a kind of loose. I, it's just crazy, but that's how I am. And so I'm putzing this this thing in a little bit like this. Let me see if I can get this focused a little bit for you here. I don't know if I can. I thought it was on atom automatic focus, but I may have pushed it out. So anyway, um, yeah, that looks pretty fuzzy. Hold on. Uh, there we go. That's a little better right there. So I'm, I'm here like this. And then suddenly the, 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 watch, watch the paper here. Suddenly it's shadowed like this. And I'm going like, like what happened? And I look up and there's these two ladies standing there. And one of them said, you're painting. Like she's telling me that I wasn't sure what I was doing. Right. You gotta love that. She goes, you're, you're painting. And I went, mm, you sure? Because this is the old man, storyteller, contrarian that I love to be. And I said, uh, oh my gosh, I am. And she said, uh, well, you're painting a honeybee. And I said, mm-hmm. She said, why? I said, because uh, the elephant wouldn't fit on this paper. Just those smart aleck answers that storytellers give. And, she, and the other lady laughed. And she said, you know, I haven't seen anybody paint like this outside before. I... Uh, not, not in, in the mountains of North. I said, where are you from? She said, Monterey, California. I said, oh, yeah, I know it. She said, you don't know Monterey. And I said, well, I know that my family, the Hahn family, makes wine there. But because we spell our names differently than theirs, they don't claim us as part. And I don't get any of the royalties from the farm. But she says, Monterey, yeah, I know about Hahn wines. And so we talked a little bit. She's looking to move to the city of Asheville and she said, what do you know about Asheville? And I said, what do you want to know? I know everything. And she said, everything. And I said, well, my dad and I knew everything, and he's no longer here, so that just leaves me. But if there is something I don't know, I'll say he knows, but he, he died took it with him. I don't know what that is. And so she's going like, you're just not going to give us a straight answer, are you? And I went like, no. And so, uh, but we had this talk, and she said, I've always wanted to watercolor paint. So here's the point of my story, people. Before I say hello, I've always wanted to watercolor paint. And I said... No, you haven't. And man, she looked at me like, I think you, you're offending me. And before she could say it, I said, I'm not offending you. And I don't want to offend you. And I'd never want to offend anyone for thinking, thinking creatively. But you're telling me you've always wanted to do this. Then I have a question for you, ma'am. And she said, okay. So that kind of changed her disposition a little bit. And she said, what's the question? And I said, so why haven't you?
When I wrote Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle, the thing that I heard the most is I always wanted to watercolor paint. Oh, I'd love to learn that. I would give anything if I could bake that biscuit or that pound cake or make cornbread or or roast a chicken on a saber sword over an open fire. No, you don't. If you did, you would do it. You would find the time to do it. Well, I don't have time. Okay, so what'd you watch on TV last night? Well, we watched these three episodes of this. Three episodes of something. Well, yeah, you know, you can, what they call, uh, uh, whatever it is, watch it all at one time. And I can't even think of what they call it. What a, what a waste. Sometimes I'll get caught up in that. And I'll go, what am I doing here? I got things to do. So I said, yeah, um, you just need to start. And she said, well, how would I do that? And I said, well, you need some paint. You need some paper. You need some brushes. And you would, here, just go to this website and download this resource. Everything you need is on there. And watch this show. And I don't think she's watching today. If you are, I enjoyed our conversation. And I hope you safely get moved to uh, Asheville if you love the place. And, uh, yeah, the cost of living is a little less than Monterey, California. And I think you'll love it in the hospitality in the South. And, and I went through all that later. But basically, I said, if you really want to do it. So I bump into people. And here's what stops them. They are uh, afraid of watercolor. They're afraid that it's too loose. They're afraid of water. They're afraid of color. No, they're not. They're afraid of failure. And so some of you just go, I just wish I could paint better. Or I wish I could paint a B. Well, I did too. And that's why I started painting a thousand. And so you see where that went. So I finished the B that I was painting and I numbered it and I signed it and I handed it to her. And she said, oh, wow. Thank you for letting me look at that. And I said, no, it's more than look. This is yours. You put it in your kitchen when you move. And boom, the conversation changed. And she said, you're right, aren't you? I need to just do this. So sometimes if you've been saying to yourself, I need to start doing this. Now, if you don't want to do this, you want to tumble rocks and make jewelry. If you want to make something, if you don't want to make anything, if you just want to read better books, just don't say someday I'm going to read that book. Someday, just, just do it. So I'm getting older. Have you noticed? Uh, yes. And so now I'm making better lists of things that I really want to do that I said I wanted to do. And I'm starting to do those. You call it the bucket list. I don't care if you call it a bucket list or I need a wash tub. No, I need a truck or a big, one of those backyard dumpsters to put all the stuff I want to do in there, but I'm doing some of it. I did voiceovers late last night. I'm recording an, an album for my granddaughter who's so young and it's not going to go anywhere, but it's her expression of being a songwriter right now. And she turns 12 on Monday. And this 11-year-old has written over 100 songs. Are all of them good? No, but she is putting amazing words to the paper and she's playing the guitar. And so my job is to set up the studio and bring it in so she can hear herself and grow. And that's what you need to do. Start showing some of your art to people. Okay, I'm off my box. You say, where has this guy been fussing at us? <laughs> All right, here we go. So hello to you, Denise Albright. Thanks for being on the show always. Uh, Denise, the package arrived. Thank you. Karen Binder, hello to you, my friend. Annette Hensland, appreciated your notes. Tom, good morning from the coast of Maine in the fall. Tom, I talk about you probably weekly. Every time I sketch a lobster... I think of my friend Tom, uh, Lobart, <laughs> Lobstock up there in Maine. If you haven't followed Tom, follow Tom. His sketchings are re remarkable. And I'm going to say this because of usually Jason's on the show somewhere, but I'll say this because architects who learn perspective and depth uh, and who, who get just the elevation and uh, you, you see this vanishing point or the vanishing point or how they do, per, it, it, it will help you in everything. The more you sketch, the better watercolor artist you'll be. Uh, um, unless you just want to do freelance flowers and stuff. But after a while, you kind of go, I have to have something to not really color in between the lines, but give me some form of letting my audience connect with it and understand what it is. Not totally true if you're doing all abstract art, but that's okay. So, uh, Karen, I think I said hello. Watercolor by art, watercolor art by Michael Paramore. He's on the show this morning. The beekeeper himself. Uh, I'm not a beekeeper, but I follow Mike Chris Whitaker, uh, <clears throat> and I had a project that I wanted to do with him, and I've let the time go. So we'll. we'll I, it's not over, but one of these days, it's on my list. Mike Donna Sell Barton. Good morning to you, gear painter from way back. Donna Buckley. Um, how's pro, uh, how's uh, uh, Payne's Gray. That's what I always want to ask Donna Buckley. Karen Pikert, thank you for being on the show. Marlena Davis, Jack Williamson, Jackie Williamson Wallace, Bob Hendrick from the Autumn Kiss Northwoods of Minnesota. Ah, Minnesota where they drink the pop. Good to have you on, my friend. I still owe you some 
flies, and I've actually started them here somewhere. Got two on the page. All right. Jane, uh, Gene Anthalzer, thanks for being on. Andy McBean, standing with your flag this morning. Skeeter Powell, my dear friend out of Greenville, South Carolina. I had a great conversation with him this uh, week on the phone and uh, meeting some friends of his this coming week, as a matter of fact, on a crazy idea. And David's Table, you guys have been a part of that. You guys have helped support that and uh, through some auctions and stuff. And it's, it's really a fun community. And when I went down there and painted with them, just right before I started feeling this, I was feeling this illness come on, but it was like when I got back home, I went, yeah. Um, I went, had to go to this conference after that. I painted with them. And I think there I kind of got the rest of my crust. But uh, it was a bronchial thing that I started earlier. And it, it had uh, created some uh, viral stuff in my chest. So I've been attacking it from all sides with uh, different foods, inhalers, you name it, and I'm, I'm feeling better. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, Sandy Rogish, thanks for being on the show. Linda Schleitning, Elaine Barnett. Look at all these people. There's Jason Nichols right there, the other architect I was talking about up in New Jersey. Sammy Olser, uh, Renee Keese, Maggie Carnahan. Golly, a lot of folks are on today. Sue Kane from across the pond, the southern pond. It's uh, about Sue's bedtime. Mark Langston, cheers from Colorado Mountains. Man, I I, uh, I am so overdue to stand in those mountains. And so one of these days, one of these days, that's on my list going in my dumpster. Uh, Fern's getting out in the dumpster not to throw away. Fern Skelly, thanks for being on the show. Um, a binge, that's the word. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't think of it, man. I was too far out. Mary Jones, thanks for being on. Alice Durham, Laura Abbott. Look at all these people piling on. I'm loving it this morning. Thank you for being on the show. Maybe I should take a break more often. Uh, Stephen Dockery, <laughs> a, a bird painter. <laughs> Ginger Payne. Hey, I'm going to cough a little bit. Don't worry about it. It doesn't hurt, and you can't get it through the internet. All right, so here we go. Hey, uh, what I said last night was I was cleaning off my desk, and I... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> made myself laugh. That's worse. Mark Langston, my uh, guitar musical friend, will know this really well. Nothing spurs on creativity like a new guitar. If you, not even going to a guitar shop and playing one, but when you have a guitar, it doesn't have to be a new instrument. It can be a new old instrument, like a good used instrument. A friend of mine bought a 1928 Martin. Um, it just, and, and when he took it out of the case, I just felt like I needed to play it. Cause I thought I haven't played a guitar in 10 years, but man, there's a song in there. I'm sure that's how you feel sometimes when you get a new piece of art supply, a piece of paper or a paintbrush. And so, uh, so I was, uh, yesterday, my granddaughter had her guitar there, a little guitar that Carol and I bought her a year and a half ago to start this process. And, um, uh, she, um, I said, this guitar needs a little bottom end. Why don't you go get my guitar? Pull it out from under the bed. Go in the other guest bedroom. Pull it out there. Bring it in here. Let's tune it up. And let's put a fresh battery in the EQ. And uh, we got it tuned up. And, and I put the headphones on her. And she strummed down it. And her eyes went boom. And sometimes, yesterday, a tube came in the mail uh, from a box about this long from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Something that I had ordered several months ago, and it noticed B.O. back order on it, and I had forgotten about it. And yesterday, it popped up, and there it is. It's a, uh, uh, no, yes, it's a 14. Is that what popped up? No, it's a, yes, the 14. The 14 popped up of a Miller Pseudo Sable brush. There it is right there. And so that really does sort of complete my set of brushes that I ordered from them, all these Pseudo Sables. It's taken me a long time not to go Sable, uh, it's a little expensive for what I do to go full sable. But this pseudo sable, I'm just going to tell you, this set of brushes right here will set you back a little bit. Um, it They are fabulous. They feel like they're, they're, it's called synthetic hair, but they feel like real hair to me. And they just are remarkable. I even bought two of this size. That's the number six because I use that so much in my normal painting. So here are the pseudo sables. Um, man, call Cheap Joe's if you're into these things and, um, and start watching them go on sale a little bit if you can. But um, I just got the, the last one yesterday and, and I even set aside all my bamboos and all my American Journeys and I still use them in here all the time. I just went ahead and picked up a little um, uh, flower vase. Isn't it cute? And I keep these in here. I'm going to paint with these big brushes today and I'm going to paint a big 
a little painting with a big brush and I'm going to paint a bigger painting with a big brush. So that's what today looks like. And let me get you going. But what inspired me was that brush last night. It, Carol had brought the mail up late when she had had to run out and I hadn't been outside because I've been working on this project here and it was raining. And, uh, I went, whoa, there's a box here from Cheap Joe's. And so I ripped it open and there was my 14 pseudo that completes my set. And I went, oh, let the dogs out. And so that's where it went. Okay. <coughs> These brushes just sing on the paper. <coughs> Linda, you are so right. And that's kind of what I said to Carol. In fact, I think I said, <coughs> I may have used that term. This brush right here can make my wife a watercolor artist. She would absolutely love to uh, to paint with this because she tests all her brushes like this. I don't know if you, you guys buy brushes like this. So this is how my wife buys a brush. Can you see here? Let me show you one. Here's, here's what she does right here. She goes into the art store and she goes, Oh, wow. Wow. I think I, I, think I like this brush. Yeah, I think I'm going to buy this brush. I'm going to like you know, you're not going to paint your face with it. She goes, this is how I can tell. <laughs> Don't you love that? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, here we go. A little music and let's get a little, uh, uh, let's see what this sounds like. That's perfect. All right, I'm going to use this big old brush and paint this B. And I've got, to, this is uh, this is on a piece of Kilimanjaro um, five and a half by nine and a half. Guess what? Cold press. And uh, it's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I taped it off a little bit. And this, by the way, is Kilimanjaro paper too. It's just, uh, I didn't, I left this one in the dryer too long. Here it is right here. This is the biggest piece of paper on this desk. I think you've seen me paint it. It's 11 by 14. And so I'm going to paint a big old uh, rooster on there for you this morning with some liquid watercolors because I haven't done it in a month or two just because I've been feeling ill on Saturday. So here we go. So a big brush, big paint. I'm going to paint this entire brush with this uh, number 12 uh, brush here. Open up my uh, paint there in my little cast iron skillet. And uh, and I do have that quill brush also. Here it is right here. And I have not used it yet. There's the quill brush right there, Mike. And look at this baby. It is like a mop without a bucket. And uh, so this is it right there. This is the Pseudo Sable Synthetic Hair Quill. These are all made in Germany. Uh, Miller, Joe Miller brought these in and uh, one of the companies that sell them. And every now and then you scoop up this beautiful price on these things. So. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this black and I'm just gonna go in here and do this black out just in this. And by the way, this is a big old brush, so it's not gonna take long to push this beautiful little hair line in there and paint something like this. This is what we don't do often enough. We don't just say, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, oh, I'd love, love to start painting, but then we never start. So just start somewhere. I sketched this B with a uh, number five uh, Pentel inner gel. Uh, needle tip, needle tip is what I always use. You guys got to know that by now, right? Okay. You, there's nothing that I, I withhold nothing. So anything that I can come up with or think, if you got a question, don't brush off the power of a new brush. Yeah, no kidding. I get it. <laughs> um, hey, listen, if you have some questions, uh, drop them in there with a QQ and I'll try to pick them up. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. If I see a question pop up, I'll grab it here. So this big brush is just throwing down some, uh, throwing down a little bit of this. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of this orange and just kind of come right in here on top of this. Why? Because sometimes bees have a little bit of, of brown and orange up in their back. They're not all just black and yellow. They start looking and you'll see some little different colors. But um, I'm going to grab a little bit of French gray and just brush down these wings like this. And I always love to use this. This is the pseudo uh, paintbrush made by Rue, actually God created. And, and I'll just will take my finger and swipe this around a little bit just to touch base in there like that. That's kind of fun how that works. And then um, I'm going to go back and grab a little more dark right here and uh, love how the water and the paint go through this hair. Uh, I've never used this brush before, so this is my first day with this. So here, I've got a new guitar uh, in my hand today. A little bit of gamboge over here, and uh, the paint is not real wet. I'm actually just letting the water from my brush carry my paint over today. I didn't soak these up a lot. You know, I used tube paints, squeezed in this 5-inch uh, by 5-inch Lodge sandwich 
uh, that's my man. It sits there. It doesn't jump around. It doesn't rattle. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it's good for if someone breaks in the house, slap. Okay. All right, here we go. So look at this. Now I let that brush run into there. So what? You know, have you noticed that bees are not just like, they've not, not been taped off. You know how you tape the stripes on your walls or some of the paintings. Sometimes you go like, very carefully. I have to mask this area. Bees aren't masked that much. Um, and so basically I just sort of like uh, grabbing that brush and dropping it in there. And if it hits the black, let it hit the black. Who cares? Let it run together a little bit. And, um, so I wanted you to see that you can take a big pointed brush and turn, turn it into something fun if you wanted to. Watch this. Just splatter with my hand on that. Holy smokes. Look at that. What happens? And grab a little bit of this yellow and put it in here. Maybe grab this little um, thing that I hang on the wall here and throw a little piece of, uh, of um, throw a little piece of this on there and just sort of swash it in. It's not made for, this is actually some steel that I put in for a company. I was working on a logo table for them and we put this in there and I had a piece left over and I just sort of made it into a little bit of honeycomb and uh, it doesn't have to work great. That's not the whole goal, but watch what happens if I take a pencil and just come in here now and do some sloppy little tracing around on the inside. Just take a look at what's going to happen here. You know, you do things the way you just want to be creative. This is what I'm talking about, about getting out of the box and just saying, one of these days I'm going to, no, just go do it. Don't let it stop you because someone thought it wasn't creative. Who, who is that someone and why do they have that much power over you? Well, I'm afraid if they don't like my art, they won't like me. Wow. Don't put your identity that far into your art, okay? So take a look what just happened. See, now I've just made this little with a pencil and I'm just going to come back in here and just sort of touch this like this. I think this bee should be uh, flying in the sky a little bit. Let's just throw a little bit of this uh, blue up here like so. Come in with some splatters like this and then suddenly, uh, now watch, I'm going to do something really crazy here. I'm going to go do a little bit of erasing. Yeah, I'm going to go in here. Now I'm going to erase some of this mess that I made. I'm going to go right here and I'm just going to take a little bit of that daub out right there and there and there and there. Oh, look, and now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to give this just about a minute to dry. And then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of my yellow and brighten that up just a little bit. So I suddenly have painted this big old B uh, on this piece of tape paper. And uh, how long did that take me? I talked the first 15 minutes of the show. And so um, lots of times we set about doing something and we spend so much time trying to make the sketch so perfect that we forget that you never see perfect things like that in, in the, in nature. The, the reason that Carol can find so many coins as she walks along the roads, anywhere she's going, she'll stop and go, if I see her start walking away, we're going toward the checkout. I see her start going that way. And I'm going like, she saw a nickel probably like, and the reason is because um, it's, it's perfectly round. It's been stamped perfectly round. When you're out in, nature and you see something that's perfectly round or something that's a perfect triangular shape you go on the beach that's shark's tooth because everything else is going to just be you know and, and so that's how she can find them it's crazy but in your art sometimes we'll spend all this time making this detailed detailed sketch and then we get and go like i just paint so tightly no you just painted by number you just filled in all the lines so make your lines looser or just just let the paint run outside the line The lady says to me, I just don't think I have steady enough hands to do watercolor. I'm going like, maybe you got just the perfect hands then. Maybe sometimes if you're just holding the brush back about this far and you're just letting it do what it's supposed to do, maybe, maybe that's what it's called for to just to make this work. Wow. Could that possibly be? I love being able to hit this on my hand with whatever's left in there and just splatter in the page. I kind of love it. All right. I almost got another minute and then I'll, I'll do that. And then I'm going to pull out another piece of paper and my liquid watercolors, some uh, clean paper towels and make a mess. Um, and I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit while we wait and hang it back up on my uh, little push pin in the wall there. It just hangs up there. So I, I haven't used that in months either. Okay. Clean paper towel. 
me grab a couple of these. Uh, paper towels, people, you know, just, just use a good one. Use one that's soft enough to, to dry up what you want. I use a Bounty or a Viva most of the time. I think those are my favorite two. Uh, neither of those people sponsor my show yet, uh, but I do use those. Okay, a little, um, where's my big brush? Here it is. I'm still using this number 12. Okay, this is number 12. Um, the next, and then I'm going to drop in some of this. Wait, too much again, too much. Just a little, still too damp. All right, I'm going to drop a little of this yellow right in there like so. A little yellow right in there. A little yellow right in here. And then I'm going to clean my brush out and I'm going to get some uh, cad orange. Sometimes I use cad orange. I try not to use Halloween orange because I don't like Halloween. Yeah, it's just one of those weird things. It just, I just, yeah. So if I can stay away from even the word Halloween, I do better. Um, <laughs> didn't like it as a kid. Didn't like it as a parent. Don't like it as a neighbor. Um, so too many great holidays to worry about that one. So for me, so that's my two cents on that today. And I'm, uh, all right, watch this. I'm going to just peel this tape off here and then show you this little painting. And uh, look, see, that was even down over the paint, and I didn't care. So I'm going to cut that paint off, make a tiny paint out of that, paint it with a big old brush, and, um, and I'm going to let it dry over here, and I'm going to come back and do some work on it in a minute. I'm probably going to add a little black where that yellow, where I picked it up, and that yellow ran down into my black, but I'll separate that here in a little bit, just like so, and add another touch of black in there. We'll finish that up. When you here's the here's the other thing I was going to tell you. When you're using a big brush, you're going to be carrying more water whether you know it or not. So you're going to have to give your work a little bit more time to just uh, uh, dry up a bit, or you'll be running everything together. It'll be loose for you, all right? Okay. So uh, here I'm going to paint this uh, with some liquid watercolor, and it's 11 by 14, and I got to decide whether I'm going to do it this way or this way, and I think I'm going to go this way today. Um, uh, here we go. I believe you guys can pretty well see that. Here's what I'm going to do. I mean, let me get rid of me some here. I'm just a little bit over. There we go. Don't need to see my big old head up there. All right. Um, all right. Got a half hour to go here and I'm going to, uh, grab myself a cup of tea and, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to think what I'm going to draw on here. Am I going to sketch much of it first? I don't think so. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my, one of my big old, no, you know what? Will this fit this way? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go this way today. Let me get a focus right here on this. Let's see if I can find something to focus on. Focus on, uh, if only. Oh, there it is. Pretty focused, actually. Let's see here. Yeah. All right. That's close enough. All right. Here we go. Let my 14 Kilimanjaro. Same paper I was just painting on. Now I just ripped this off. So there it is. So now you can see it. It's uh, 140 pound. By the way, when you go to buy this paper, don't be fooled by the 300. Some people say, oh, I didn't. It's Make sure it's the poundage. 300 pound paper is great paper, but it takes a lot more water and it'll take a little more getting used to. This is the original bright white, which I love the bright white for my style. You might like the natural color. I will tell you this, Kilimanjaro's natural paper has a little more uh, sizing in it, which is starchy. And so it's going to hold the water differently than this, this paper is. All right. This is 100% pure cotton. It's rag cotton. It's acid free. Uh, uh, and I, I, it sounds like I do commercials for Cheap Joe's, but actually I love those people and uh, miss Joe already. I'll miss his storytelling when we were just back up at Blowing Rock recently. And I thought, man, uh, I miss uh, saying hi to Joe. But life moves on, people. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to grab some. Uh, and this, by the way, is uh, the smaller version of this paper. This is about the biggest thing you see me paint on. It's 9 by 12. I paint on this a lot. Um and here's the other thing I do with this paper. I buy this in a pad and not a block. And you know, and you know there's a difference. I do buy blocks. And most of the time, if I if I were painting not online, I would probably use a block all the time. If I travel somewhere, I'm taking a block with me. Why do I, I take a block? Because a watercolor block is glued down on all four sides with a little opening here. 
that allows me to take a tool, slip it in the opening, rip off the paper. You know that. But it ensures that my paper stays flat if I even get a little extra water or if I'm traveling or if I just want to let it sit at the desk and not worry about taping it down. I don't like to use tape. I use tape as borders, but I don't like to tape it down. And this way I can just turn the whole page. If I tape it down to anything, I'll tape it down to a bigger strata, a substrate, so I could turn the whole thing like this. But wherever I tape it, I'm losing the edge. And people would say, I wish you would lose the edge so we'd have room to frame. That's what framers are for. Okay, and I'm not going to let the framer tell me how I can do my art. Okay, so that sounds really arrogant, but that's just kind of how it is. It's like, here's the paper. You know, I'm not telling you where to lay your T-square. So... You frame and I'll paint. And so that's what I say to those people. Uh, and sometimes I just put mine in a glass frame and put it on the wall. And I say, I like to see the outside edges of the paper. Um, and so I don't like to paint a five by seven on a nine by 12 piece of paper. That seems wasteful to me. So those are some things that are just, those are nobody's rules, but my rules. I don't have hard and fast rules. It's just suggestions that I go with. But a block of paper is glued down. A pad is just glued down on the top, like you used to carry to high school, nifty 50 with the horse head. Okay. What I do with this and, and make it easy on me is that I use a lot of these loose at my desk, cut them in half. Boom, boom. I love that size. That's really the size that people can put in their house. Cut it four times. That's beautiful. Cut it six times. It fits in here and I carry it with me. And that becomes my portable art. Does that make sense? So I'm using, instead of buying small paper bound up and cost me, I'll buy a bigger piece, cut it up myself, and I just cut it with a nice little paper rip or sometimes just fold it one time and rip it in like the deckled edge. So this is a pad, and that's why I use the pad like this. Same here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip a sheet off of this pad, and I'm going to lay it down because I'm going to get paint on something here. And I don't want to get it on that nice next piece of 11 by 14 paper. All right. Whew. I got through that, didn't I? All right, here we go. Maybe. Okay. I uh, love bright white. Take a sheet ruler. Yeah, and people are going to tell you, there, Chris is saying, take a sheet ruler off in squares, paint small paints, and see how that works. You bet. I can do that too. But here's what I do. If I were to just take a ruler, I would never be able to keep my paint inside all those little squares. So I'd do this one and ruin two more. So for me, I just go ahead and cut it in little pieces like this, slip them in this little notebook. Look at that. Boom. I'm sitting somewhere at a restaurant. Uh, yesterday, I gave away two business cards. The guy said, I need your business card. And I said, uh, okay, here it is. And he goes, what do you mean here it is? And I said, I, I'm the printer of my own business card. It just takes me a while. And he goes, this is funny. He just scooted the chair back when he was having a cup of coffee. I was too. And he, and he, and I wrote my name and he said, well, where's your website? And I said, dude, just Google this. And he went, Oh, I said marketing. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my Safari pen. Let's see if this one's still writing. Oh, look at that. And I'm just going to knock out a big old Rue right here. And he's just going to be what I call the stalwart Rue. He needs some stalwart music. He needs something. That, what's this? Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, here we go. I think he's going to be a coffee roux. I've been into coffee roux here lately, and I'm, I'm loving what's happening with them. Um, it's that time of year where you need the cup and you need you need some coffee and I'm, I'm loving kind of doing the coffee roux. So I'm gonna do a big old coffee roux here, just like this. There he is right there in this cup. This finger goes up there. Got two on the outside of the cup. This one coming around this way. And there it is right there. And I'm gonna do a little doodle down here and I'll do a spill a little bit later. So there's my coffee roux. I'm gonna take my pintail number seven and I'm just gonna give it some cross hatching across here. You guys have seen me do this a million times. This is how to waste a big piece of paper and, and feel great about it. Stop being so stingy with your supplies. Get your art out there and let a couple people buy a couple of your paintings. Um, this, this piece of paper cost 
Well, I think it's about $35 or $36. Here's, here's a pack of paper unopened. It's a, uh, uh, this is a, a glued on four sides. So this is a pad. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. It's 30 bucks. Okay, if I sell one painting out of here for $30, I've paid for this whole pack of paper. Voila. If I sell two paintings out of here for $15 each, I pay for this pack of paper. If I sell four, you, you get the idea, okay? If I sell one out of here that sells for $80, I just bought four packs of this paper, three packs of this paper. You see how fun that, fun that is? I don't do math, but you get the idea of what I'm talking about, okay? So, all right, that's plenty of sketching for this room. Let's go a little liquid watercolor. Let's go to that number 12 brush. The one I just threw at myself there. Let's go and, uh, okay. <coughs> All right, here we go. I'm just gonna go and uh, throw a little bit of uh, water. Oh my gosh, no, I'm gonna throw a lot of water in here like this. I think you can probably start to see the shine just a little bit, but I'm just gonna throw a little water in here and now I'm bringing some water over. Mike Paramore, this would be a great place for that quill pen that you're talking about. Man, that thing would be shining like new money right here, but I've already got this 12 rolling. It's been warmed up. The crank rope's working. I got it started, put a new battery in it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now, watch this. I'm just gonna start dropping in. First thing I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of this uh, CAD red. This is permanent red, actually, and drop a little bit right there and there. Okay, so there we go into here and here and here. That's plenty of red, I think. I'm going to put a spot of red right there just to let it run around. I love that, don't you? Now I'm going to drop a little bit of this blue in here in the tail, just right there and right there. That's going to be plenty. That's a drop and a quarter. I'm going to put a touch of, um, of this yellow gamboge right in there and maybe just another piece to go right in there to create some orange. And then I'm going to put a little of this, um, is this carbon black? Yes, I'm going to put a little touch of carbon black right there, 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 and there, and maybe a spot right there, a little black in the tail, just some little spots. And I'm going to start to put this together and see what happens. I think I'm going to need a little more yellow right here because I like, I've been putting green in the bottoms of my ruse, and I like the little green look. I just like those green feathers this time of year. Um, I feel like that's a little good winter feather. It's like the hay crop coming. You know, the hay crop's gone and you got a winter, some winter greens planted out there. And um, Bob would know that. Okay, he's, he's the farmer that's moved to now Minnesota. He's farming ice fish right now, I think. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to change the music one more time and finish this up. Keep this clean. Let's see. Um, paint like you're a millionaire, Mike Paramore says. That's a good line, my friend. I like it very much. Paint like you're a millionaire. Paint like uh, you don't care if you had any paper or not. Or the paper truck's going to come and just drop something off today. I don't think I can listen to that, do you? Ah, there we go. All right, here we go. That's what I started with today. Man, look at this brush. It is just so sweet. That's a lot of paint, probably way more than I ever needed. But look at this green come through. Is that not beautiful? Okay, did I have any idea that this was going to turn out this way or this colors? No. Did I care? No. This is the style of painting that I started with and that I still love so much. I mean, today, it just makes me want to do this over and over and over, and I don't get tired of it. I do not get tired of it. Now, notice that I grabbed some of that, I put it in here. I got a little touch of green. I got a little orange glow going in there. I'm kind of liking that. Rolling some feathers out here. Roll those around. Bring down some of these. Break the plane on that. Uh, wow, that it's taken me so far about um, I don't know, not very long. That's my favorite time, about not very long. I'm gonna grab a piece of, of uh, paper towel here, just a half piece, rip this off. I'm gonna go right in here and I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing. There's just a little too much red for me right there. I'm gonna take some out.
And I'm going to take a little of this blue out right here. Look at this. Nice. I think I'm going to put a spot of it right there. <coughs> now, let's see. I'm going to need a little bit of uh, leg color. So let's go in here, add a little water to my brush, and let's come in and create a little bit of this red-orange right here. Here we go, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange. I took some of that out, so now what I've got is we got my leg color. So I'm using my painting as a palette to just come in and create a little bit of this leg color. I want a little more red at the top of that leg, just where it, it's uh, got some feathers. That green's gonna come in nicely there, turn that to brown, see what happens. Um, look, I don't keep a color wheel on my desk. I never have. Um, I don't, it's not that I don't have time or that I don't care. Uh, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But what color is that? I don't care. It's the color that I like. And if I don't like it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab a little more of this green and I'm going to bring it out a little brighter. I'm going to grab a little red and I'm going to put it in here and create a little more brown out of it. And so, look, I do know how the color wheel works, but I didn't have to study it, nor did I have to pass it in uh, Miss Richard's exam at school saying, oh, you, um, he plays well. He doesn't play well with others, but, and he also hasn't learned his color wheel. You're going like, my dad's going like, just put the color on your like. Son, it's a boathouse. Nobody cares. The fish don't care what color your boathouse is. And so for me, I just kind of do this a little bit differently than some. And I do it because I'm not in a hurry. I'm really not in a hurry. But I paint quickly because it helps me stay loose, for heaven's sakes. Okay, look at that. That is just too cool right there. And I'm going to put some streaks in there like that. I'm going to come in and I'm going to use this pen right here in just a second. I'm going to let that dry just for a little bit before I go put that eye in. I'm rocking this rooster and I'm liking this rooster that's rocking. Okay, let's go in and grab some French gray, which I don't have in this painting. So here's... Excuse me, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab, uh, yes, I am. I'm going to grab some French gray because I think my coffee cup is kind of a French gray. And so I modeled these after my mm, roux cups. And so here's where this is coming down, just like this. And I just went in there with a wet brush. I picked up some French gray and I'm letting it just kind of come down. And by the way, I'm going to go in and touch a little brown in there to just get a little touch of this. And then I'm thinking this rooster on this morning is probably having a little cream in his coffee. Um, just a little Payne's Gray, Donna. Put a little Payne's Gray right there just for that. Watch this. I'm going to take um, a little, um, just a little bit of this uh, French Gray, and I'm just going to wind it up the page just a little bit like a spring, just kind of going up there like that, just like there's a little little bit of steam coming off my coffee. You won't see it unless you get close to the painting. And I kind of like that too. And then I'm just going to splatter what's left here just a little bit. I'm going to grab a little of this blue before it dries and just come in and just do a little bit of splatter around just like so. Just a touch. I want to come in here on my hash um, where I, ha I um, cross hatch this. And just, this is my O-tail number seven, pintail 07 bleeding right here is what that is right there. That's just a little bleed that we're getting from that. Um, there's that going there. That's a finger coming up there. There's his third one right there. His thumb, as they say. Who said chickens didn't have thumbs? Okay, not like monkeys, but they got some. All right. All right, so I'm going to take that out. I like that orange stripe that happened right there. In fact, I like it so much that I think I'm going to get a little bit of this orange over here and punch another one in right there with it. Ooh, look at that. Just drop it in. By the way, I'm going to do one more thing here for you out of liquid watercolor that I like to do because you can with liquid watercolor. I'm going to grab it here. It's uh, titanium white. And I'm just going to, as a nice sound, I'm going, to, I'm going to just go and drop a piece in right there, wherever it falls, and just let it fall. See it hit right there. All right. Yeah, this is like from uh, Shapoopy from, uh, what's the movie? Music Man, the play, Music Man. Okay, so I'm just now I'm just going to take this and brush it up in here just a little bit like this. Just give myself a little, and I'm just going to put a little clean water splash into that too. 
Just let it kind of drizzle there and run down where it needs to. Just a little star back there in his feather. I like that. I like it a lot. A little bit of a purple splatter in there. Kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I'm going to come in here with this pen on my 07, and I'm going to just do some little bit of detail in the handle, just like uh, Ben Marks. And then and once this dries a little, I'm going to come back in here in just a second and put in some... Um, I'm going to put in some detail in the feet. I'll change those claws up a little bit, turn those in. And um, so we're just about to get there. All right, here we go. I'm going to clean up these feet just a little right here. And uh, before I get back to my next project today, which is back in Studio 23B, that's down the hall. This is, this is, uh, Winding the music down a little bit here. Now let's go in here. I need myself a little bit of a. Uh, I need myself a little bit of a, an arbor. Here's one right here. I can hold this down. Come in here. I don't want to touch the painting down here. I'm gonna put this here and rest my hand on it. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put his eye in right there. see because I've had to put my big old fat hand out there. I got uh, gorilla hands, I know. I'm not a tiny person. The doctor said, hey, we like what you've done with your weight. And I said, well, I didn't like how I got here. I've been ill. I hadn't been eating, man. But, uh, you know, it's kind of good to go in and know that you lost about six or eight pounds. You guys are watching too closely. I'm not worried about that. So, uh, all right. So uh, here we go. Now I'm going to put some detail in. I'm going to do a little piece there. Coming down with some veining on his feet. And I like to just roll those little wires back like that. Same here. And then some, just some da 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 da. This is why I love that 07 Ford. Just take a look at how it writes over the wet watercolor. The lines become softer. You got to love it. Um, like I said, I buy these up in boxes of dozens because someday Pintail's going to just up and change them on me. And they're not going to care how many letters I write or who I write to. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Now, I'm going to do one more little thing here. And I, I may, and I'm just going to do it with the same brush. I don't care. Here, here we go. I'm just going to grab a little bit of brown out of here. And I'm going to put it right here. And a little touch of water on that brown. Just right there. <clears throat> take a little bit of a drinking straw and get this drip to go the way I want it to go. And I think I want it to just go out this way. Perfect. There it is right there. That's that bad feeling when you walk outside and the door hits your elbow on the way out and you spill your coffee. And you goes, go, Dad, gum the cotton picking chicken plucking luck. And that's kind of how that works right there. Now I'm just going to come in right here and put in a little bit of detail. Uh, how fun is this to do? If you're not painting, sometimes just go get a big piece of paper and just waste a stew out of it and make something fun happen. You will appreciate it. Um, need a little bit of black. Let's see if I can conjure up some right there. It's the wrong word this time of year, right? Okay, so. And then I want to come in here. And I, I, I don't mind that uh, there's a little bit of a pink purple that just kind of uh, zipped up into the tail there. When I roll that up there, I kind of like it. Kind of like it a lot, actually. A little bit of a wing coming in. Not too detailed. I don't want to get too detailed, but I want to actually bring a little bit of this black right in here. And then down here. I don't like that. I'm going to take it, take it out. Zip, zip. That's perfect. Okay, it's too dark. Okay, now I want a little bit of shadow. So I've got a couple ways to do shadow. I think I'm just going to use a little too much, a little less. Let me just wash it out. A little bit of purple right there as shadow. And kind of come in and also under his tail, I'm going to touch a piece of blue right in there like that. Now I'm going to go up here with some water, just wash the page a little bit in this and come in. And uh, uh, this, uh, I'm going to put this rooster out on auction today and he's going to be somebody's uh, big wall piece for their, uh, for their utility room outside. <laughs> 
All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of green now and come back in here and give him just a little bit of green grass. And I'm just going to use the same number 12 and just spike some grass in like that. And then I'm going to grab my, my pen back here and come in with some of this. Look at this. And I'll let this grass just come up like so. Uh, let's get some of that brown and put the coffee spill down here in the grass. And... Uh, I'm going to go do one more little piece here. And I want to touch a little yellow in around this eye. Just right here. Got to come down with this tiny little brush. Oh, yeah, that looks good right there. And I want a little bit of uh, that cad orange right in the bottom of that beak. That's perfect. <coughs> Waste the stew out of it, Pat Light Buddy says. <laughs> Ah, hey, look, pretend that you had a new brush today or ask for a couple of these brushes for Christmas. One more time. I'm going to tell you what they are. These are Joe Miller. Uh, it just says Miller on them. These are the, uh, look, for 15 years, I have got my use out of my American Journey uh, synthetics. And I love them. I still love them. I still carry them in my uh, bug out bag all the time. There's a couple in there right now hiding out. But these I've brought to my studio this year. There's the quill. And here's what they are. It's the whole set. It's a number six quill. It's a number six uh, regular uh, synthetic sable. It's called pseudo sable. This is the number 16. This is the number 14. I've been painting with the 12 all morning right here. This is a number eight. This is a number six. And I think I have a number four. So I have four through 16 with the quill. And I have two of the number sixes because that's just one of my favorite brushes that I love to paint with normally. So there's what the set looks like. Here, let me move this over and I can show you. Here's what the set looks like right here. Um, not in order, but of course you get that. You're smarter than that. Um, the hair, the synthetic hair on these, literally, come on. You're going to be sitting there watching a movie going like, oh, that is so nice. Okay. That testing pattern that my wife puts them through. Okay. Um, she just longs for her oil color brushes to paint like this. I'll just tell you that right now. They don't. Okay. You have to push oil paint around. It's like, uh, it's like disking uphill when you're trying to, uh, cut corn. All right. Cut the stops out of cornfields where I was heading with that, but I never finished my thought, which is one of the things that Carol tells me I do all the time. You know, you never really finish your statements. I'm saying, I don't know what you... Yeah. All right. Hey, I'm going to check and see if there's any questions. We'll spread a little dirt in the field. Um, and uh, I think it's going to just have one little caption and signature, and I'm going to be done with it. I'm going to grab this pen right here. And come in with a little bit of this right here. I'm loving this uh, pen. This is my Safari. And by the way, the Safari ink, don't, don't, please don't put other ink except Safari ink in your Safari pen. Just, just don't do it. Okay. Uh, buy, if you're going to buy a good fountain pen or even the ones that we buy, which are very inexpensive by my dad, just go ahead and, and order some cartridges with them. Uh, don't cheat yourself creatively. Please don't. Don't go out and spend more than you need to. Just decide where you want to go. But every now and then, introduce a new brush to the flock and have some fun with it. All right. Uh, exceptionally <laughs> caffeinated Rue. All right. Let's see if there's any questions at all. Anybody put any up there? Whoops, I searched in the wrong place. Sorry. Here we go. I'm supposed to search up here. QQ. Uh, do your bigger brushes keep your style looser? Jason, great question. Yes, to me, they do. And the fact is that it's the amount of water that they carry. The amount of water that you add to your watercolor is going to cause that to go somewhere. What is the deal with water? Path of least resistance. So when I put water on this page first and I drop some color on it, that color is following that water. <gasps> what do I always say? Water first, then color. Let the color follow the water. Okay, this takes you back to building dams in creeks as a child or, or building a sand trough and, and pouring the bucket of water and watch where it goes. And so that for me is this magical thing that takes place and just happens when you, when you paint with watercolor. 
I'm just blown away by it constantly. Um, makes my day. I'm going to post this one. I'm going to go back. I'm going to move it right now, very carefully down here in the floor. All right, I'm going to take this. I've got two minutes to go, and I'm going to take this and go back and uh, go yellow, black, yellow, black. Uh, that's a black piece right there. I'm going to grab a little of this black, and I'm going to go back in. And now I'm just going to bring some of that black back into this B right here. Just bring it back in. Look how that cleaned that up really well. Big brush. Touch the black with a little bit of water, and look what is happening. It's just rocking and rolling. Sorry to check my um, delivery driver there. Okay. All right. I love this messy bee. He's just a big old mess. He's a wintertime mess. There he is. All right. Hey, uh, blessings for all of you being on the show today. Uh, <coughs> what is the bee count? The bee count is 1,070. No, oh, this is 966. Sorry. 1,079. Oh, and that's what he'll be. He'll be B. Number 1,079 today. There he is right there. Be loose. Roo doodles. Mike 23. Voila. Look at this. I'm going to rip this off here. I'm going to take my uh, trusty old shop scissors. No, I'm not. I'm just going to rip the top off this right here. There we go. That's the painting, just like it says. I'm done with it. Boom. You know, it's just kind of those raucous paintings that you just uh, throw out in your, um, like I said, your utility room and go, wow, I'm going to put that in my shop by my desk. It's going to inspire me today to say, thank God for the honeybees. I come in here like this and put some detail in. I uh, come in here and put a little of this in. I love where this is going. Uh, I love this splotch that still ran into right here. It's uh, it's well. It's going really well. All right. I think uh, I think I'm finished. I think I'm done for the day. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for riding along with me today. I really do appreciate you guys being part of this community, sharing my page. Uh, I've got some exciting things coming up for uh, this uh, this this fall and this winter. Um, and I can't wait to tell you about them, but I'm, I can, I can wait to tell you about them. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait, but I am going to wait because I'm working on some folks, uh, with some details and some things that I've never turned loose before from my roo shop. And so I'm getting ready to do that. Um, hopefully before Thanksgiving. So I'll have some Christmas gift ideas for you. And, uh, but I want to show up here if I can, as many Saturdays as I possibly can, I want to show up here and paint with you. And uh, some of you know I am making a change in Patreon. I've got about five more Patreons to go till the end of the year. And I'm going to go back and follow up. And I'm going to push people the way I did today. Don't say you're going to paint and don't paint. Paint. Make your money work for you. Look, it's $11.57 to be a part of Patreon. But it's going to go away because I've got a new thing that I'm going to do. Uh, and how I want to teach a couple workshops next year. Um, but also some new products that I'm working on and just thinking through the art world. So, uh, blessings to you all. I'm uh, glad I'm feeling better. I'm talking faster anyway, and now I'm off and running. So, uh, tea, towels, uh, tea, <laughs> tea towels are part of that, yes. <laughs> uh, Lori Stanley, Handelmeyer Henderson, I don't think I said how old you are, or Randall Taylor Craven. Uh, and Dorina Lacino Tan, fun morning, thank you. I, and I probably just massacred your name, but I'm so sorry if I did. Dorina uh, Tan. Okay. Andy McBean, thank you. Uh, who else didn't I say hi to this morning? I think I covered most of you on the show. What is the B count? I just did that. Dead gum chicken plucking luck. <laughs> okay. That'd be a great one for that. We'll just put it on there. Did you say Miller brushes? Yes, I did. These are Joe Miller brushes. Cheap Joe's art stuff. Um, 
Here's what that company looks like right here. Uh, Cheap Joe's our stuff. Where, where's my little cover for my paint? Oh, here it is. I just keep it on here. I put this on, on magnets on here to cover up my, this is my homemade, uh, these are full pans, uh, Lodge, $15 online, and I cut a piece of acrylic and just put a Cheap Joe's art sticker on This is American Journey paint, which is the paint that I use when I'm not using liquid Dr. P.H. Martins. Um, remember, there is a resource guide on the front of my website. Uh, you can go there and put in your email address and download that for free. It's a resource guide, and I send out almost two emails a year, so you're not going to get bombarded from me ever. You're going to get some more coming this fall if you're on my email list because I'll be sending out some things that I have available that we're working on right now. If you haven't looked at my daughter's art in a while at True Cotton, please go look at it. True Cotton Art, her new advent calendar uh, for this year is new art, very bright. It's been released. It is amazing. And her devotional book is off the chain. I'm buying those to give away as Christmas gifts. So um, God bless you all. I appreciate you. Thanks so much. I'm out of here like a herd of honeybees. You thought I was going to say turtles, didn't you? <laughs>